Hey guys, VBad here with another V Plays, and we're hopping into a tier 10 Japanese light fighter, the Ki 162 3. This is an interesting bird, mostly because of the guns, and I've finally come to the realization that 30mm cannons are temperamental at best. The guns have very low shell velocity and very low rate of fire compared to any of the other aircraft that have similar capabilities, right? So, with only two 30s, oh, <laughs> no, I can't say that. Give him a smile. So, this is going to be a mid-altitude fighter. The 30s are a little bit temperamental. I've been flying it a bit tonight, though, so maybe this is the recording that keeps, finally. And maybe I'm syncing up with the guns just a little bit more. The thing I do like about this aircraft is that it does have the ability to really stick on aircraft. So, unlike the other dual 30mm aircraft that are fairly limited, this one does have... The highest maneuverability which allows it to be able to do things like stay with this altitude fighter that dipped down just a little bit too low and to dogfight with these air defense fighters and do fairly well for itself like typically i would be afraid of an aircraft like this if i was in a focke wolf 252 because he could keep up with me he can turn on me and he has the firepower to decimate my airframe but here i am having to brakes just so that way I can stay with this aircraft because I can definitely stick with him on his tail. Now the reason I'm going for the airfield right now is because I'm going to have a heck of a time going up against that IL-40. This is going to be a heavy capture game for me uh, because I just don't have the output to be able to go after the player and the ground attacker. There we go, picked him up, but one of our friendlies just died. And here comes an enemy aircraft. It's the MiG-15 again. We got a few rounds out on him. We took his tail. The nice thing about the 30s is a high crit potential. Again, high crit potential working against this hunter. There we go. Picked him up. We got the airfield, so that's going to be a bit helpful. I'm going to go ahead and throw the F2 on there. Hopefully, my allies know to go over there. In the meantime, we're going to fiercely defend this, and hopefully that our bot respawns will be enough to be able to flip the zone. Now, we do have mid-altitude performance. That's pretty good. And that's really going to be helpful for being able to periodically climb up to altitudes, which would be ill-advised, because really I shouldn't be up this high. But good news is, this 228 is going for the zone. Oh, noise bug. Gotta love that noise bug. But, come on. Die in the zone. Perfect. That gave my team just a little bit of an edge over here, but we are losing the central zone yet again. Let's get down a little bit lower before we get ourselves in trouble. That's going to be the MiG-15, right? Yeah. How did I know? It's almost like these bots are predictable. There's a BVP. Don't want to get in on a head-on with him. I also don't want to get in a head-on with this aircraft. He does have double the guns we have, but if I can slow myself down enough to get on his tail, I do have better maneuverability than him. There we go. I slowed him down enough for my buddies. There we go. We got a good hit in. Got his engine knocked out. What do we got down here? Ground attacker. He's taken out. Nice. Oh, come on. Get out of here with that nonsense. You mad about earlier, buddy?
Again, those guns heating up is problematic. Let's go ahead and get some heals. And we'll go over to defend the plant. Because we can actually do that with this mid-altitude fighter. So that's going to be a nice thing for us. I'm willing to bet there's a ground attacker over here, though. What we got here? Call for attack on this guy. It'll be hitting him as he goes into the zone. And this is a dive bomber, so he's going to be getting into my regime anyways. Again, I don't want to be the one getting focused down by his tail gunners because my survivability isn't that great. Good, we knocked him out. It's already damaged. Yep, guns overheated, so we didn't get the kill. Again, that's another issue with this. Guns overheat pretty quick. Pulsating your fire is going to really help you out. Managed to pick up air supremacy over here, so not too bad. Ooh, apparently Wonder took off. I guess he thought I was cheating. I thought he was joking. Um, Alright. That was a good run-in. Usually that doesn't happen the way that just did. Uh, low health J7. Oh, solid battle. Unfortunately, we lost the IL-40P early on, so that kind of stinks. We did pick up the Akamatsu medal, and we picked up the, what is that, Conqueror? So, not too bad. Uh, played to the strengths of the airframe and ended up playing out for us in the long run. Again, we kind of had a shoe in there as a loss of one of the enemy players, or the only human enemy players. So that's unfortunate. Uh, I did say that this compares very much to the LA-15 at Tier 10. The major difference is, of course, being that this gets more maneuverability by sacrificing some of the top-end speed, but not enough that it hurts it overall. I feel like the LA-15 is really fast for an aircraft that does have the maneuverability. It does. But on top of that, the LA-15 gets much more consistent gun performance from the 323s that it's equipped with, while the dual 30s on this, you probably were feeling it watching me miss all those shots of how how temperamental the guns are now practical use the la-15 well one it already has a higher damage output it's a slightly higher damage per second but it's also going to feel much more consistent right it's it's like the difference between the guns on the focke wolf 252 and the p1101 one has 420s one has 230s which one feels like it's hitting more often and harder, it's going to feel like the 1101 is, even though there's 30s coming out of the 252. I think the DPM is actually higher on the 1101 as well, but you understand my point, right? It's Guns don't mean anything unless you can get them to hit. It is nice to get those crits. We saw a few instances of that when we took on that MiG-15 and managed to bring them down to our airspeed. Uh, speaking of airspeed, we wanted to compare these numbers. You can see base cruise speed, not too bad, but you can see there's a 50 mile an hour difference between the top boost speeds. The LA-15 with the configuration I have will allow it to be able to boost up to its max dive speed, while the Key 162.3 is going to have to dive in order to be able to get that extra 50 miles an hour but it still has more than enough speed to be able to get to where it needs to be on the battlefield as we were able to traverse between the airfield and the mining plant fairly effectively again the maneuverability this is where you get your increase uh, lower roll rate but you do get a much better turn rate uh, on your 360 and in addition to that we can throw on the pneumatic control to be able to get turned on things like a yak 30 if you catch a yak 30 out that isn't paying attention uh, you can turn with him and get inside his turn if you have the pneumatic control on and he does not uh, granted there's a lot of people out there with specialized yak 30s but this can do well enough on a surprise run Altitude comparison, they have the exact same max optimal and ceiling, which is why I wanted to compare these two. Uh, but at the same time, the LA-15, again, better engines, better speed. You're looking at a top end of 589 compared to 557 for that climb rate. So overall verdict, the Key 162 as a twin 30 millimeter cannon fighter 
is probably going to feel the best out of the three that you see down here. We got the 252, the 162.3, and the Swift. Um, the Swift is going to be the next best, and the fact that well, 252 just hurts. But why is that? It's because the 30s punish you so much for missing that you end up holding the trigger down longer, like I did against that one bomber. You overheat, you miss, and then you don't get a chance to come back around and do it again with these aircraft that aren't nearly as turny as this aircraft is. This being the one of like, I think it's the second most turny aircraft at this tier. It allows me to be able to get that nose around and get another attempt with the 30s. It also makes it a lot easier to get better at it because you're able to get more opportunities to fire. So you're your mind's eye is kind of already building the calculation of how much lead I need to pull based on the enemy aircraft speed with these 30 millimeter cannons lagging so far behind. So that makes it a lot better. And when it comes to the grind, you're coming off of nearly an identical aircraft, same type of gun configuration, same type of performance. This gets a little bit more turn. This gets a little bit more speed. It feels like it holds its speed better as well, by the way. But it just has is a nice all-around package, and it's an easy transition. Unlike you know coming from this the attacker and going to the Swift, or coming from the TA-183 to the 252, where you get four 30s or you have four 20s, and now you're down to two 30s. Two 30s. It's just a totally different ball game. So uh, hopefully, I didn't scare anybody that's going down the key line but i do like this plane it's just the 30s are going to take some getting used to and once you start to hone it in it starts to feel a lot better and i've really started to enjoy this aircraft it does feel much like my key 162 one and i didn't like selling that aircraft but i do feel like this is a strong replacement for that aircraft anyways hope you guys enjoy the video and as always i'll catch you on the next one I'm